I'm Dr. Hackey Reitman. Welcome to another episode of Exploring Different Brains. And it's not every day I get to have a couple of my heroes on here. This is George Haggerty, the president of Beacon College, where every student has an opportunity and all their brains are different and they're wonderful and they're all smarter than me. And his lovely wife, Oksana, who is in her own, well, actually, you know, George is lucky to be with her because she really carries the ball and he takes a lot of the credit. But uh, George and Oksana from Beacon College up there in Leesburg, Florida, welcome to Exploring Different Brains. Thank you, Hacky. Great to be here. Well, I was so lucky to uh, uh, be able to uh, give the commencement address up there to your terrific students. And uh, and um, I was so humbled to get my honorary PhD there, and you guys were terrific. And you know your your remarks were were spot on, and we've had many um, highly positive responses, whether they're they've been in emails or they've been in phone calls. And we're actually going to package yours and Jalika Kumar's um, speeches with one that was from two years ago that is uh, was done by uh, Senator, Senator Harkins. Harkins. No, sorry. Harkins, the man who introduced the Disability Act. Yes, and, yeah. uh, and we're going to uh, uh, speeches that you should know about. And um, we're going to put it as a, as a trinity. And uh, we're really looking forward to uh, putting that out on our YouTube channel. Oh, I'm I'm honored to be in that crew. That uh, Jillica was terrific with her, uh, you know, uh, all the software she's making and and everything else. And uh, boy, what a what a bunch of what a whole terrific culture you have up there, of helping everybody achieve their full potential. And what a what an all star cast you have up there. So congratulations on all you do. Thank you, thank and thank and thank you for being part of the. 2022 commencement. Well, thanks. Now, why don't you guys introduce yourselves properly to our audience so that they can learn all about you? Sure. I guess mm -hmm. I. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, my name, I'm George Haggerty, and I'm the president of, of Beacon College, have been for just about nine years. Um, I have a background in special education and uh, started my career in, in special ed, worked for the US Department of Education, and then went uh, back over to uh, higher education and taught at uh, Stonehill College, my alma mater, and my other alma mater, Harvard University, and then became a university president at Franklin Pierce University in New Hampshire. And at that time, I recognized so that was from 95 to 2009. At that time, I recognized that we were all making promises at universities that we had specialized uh, centers uh, for individuals that had learning and attention issues, but that they weren't uh, well staffed. And so the promises that um, may have been made uh, could not be fulfilled. And um, And I was always, concerned about that. Subsequently, um, Oksana and I uh, moved to Greece and then Italy and uh, stayed in higher education. We wanted to walk the talk of international education and, uh, and in Ukraine, as a matter of fact. And when we came back uh, to the United States, uh, this was the position that we thought was most conducive to both of our careers and especially the, the marriage of um, the teaching of students with learning and attention profiles with higher education. And so that's how we came to Beacon. I, I joined Beacon College a year after my husband and I was working as a learning specialist here for six years. And then I became uh, the assistant director of the Center for Student Success, where all learning specialists work. And uh, now uh, this is the end of my second year as the director of the Center for Student Success. My background is in educational developmental psychology and really a chance to work at Beacon 
and a unique institution that it is. And a chance to work with these students who come to Beacon is such a professional um, luck for me as an educator, as a developmental psychologist, because I can see all these developmental profiles and learning patterns, and it's amazing to be able to do it. Tell us about your recent wonderful adventures in Ukraine. I'm from Ukraine originally. I was educated for doctoral level in Ukraine. As a matter of fact, I got my doctoral degree from Kharkiv National University, and I'm sure almost everybody see saw here the footage of uh, Russian bombings of Kharkiv National University. It was personally quite painful because it was exactly the building where I, I had my defense. So I don't know what was the reason to bomb the psychology school, but there was a reason probably. So we are from Ukraine. I'm from Ukraine. And when it all started on February 24th, we for a week we were in a total disarray. We didn't know what to do. And then um, I do have my entire families back there, my parents, my sister, and my other sister's family. And so we decided that we can do something meaningful as all of us. And I know so many people here in the country who also do many, many meaningful things. And we wanted to be, uh, to do something. And so we traveled to Romania to pick up my two nieces and the nephew. And we are here in the United States right now. And um, it's a very strange time when you stop planning and stop dreaming. And so for now, we're just trying to settle and to see what comes next, because that's truly a very unusual time, you would say. Yeah, very. And I had the pleasure of meeting your nieces who are just terrific and are already blossoming here. <laughs> and um, it's uh, such a shame what's been going on in Ukraine. And that's a whole nother discussion, but we'll, we'll turn our focus back to Beacon College here. It's so heartening to see a vision become a reality. And you guys had this vision for what Beacon College could become, and it's been becoming that, okay? I met all of these young people going into all different walks of life, their hard work done, their education gotten, in this uh, fully accredited uh, college. And um, so everybody's brain is a little bit different. And that's what we want to get the whole world to realize. Just so everybody's brain is a little bit different. So you give them what they need. And, and as you probably saw at the commencement, uh, our commencements are, are very celebratory and very emotional. And uh, you'll see that the audience uh, for 86 graduates is much larger than you might guess, a thousand people. And the reason for that is it's not only the mom and dad who come, it's not only maybe the grandparents, uh, an aunt or uncle, uh, maybe some siblings, but it's also the first grade teacher who believed in that student. It's also uh, the minister who really kept the, the family moving forward in a positive way. And so you see a, 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 real, a really beautiful support system um, that had flourished beforehand. You see them all celebrating together at one time. What would you say is the most challenging aspect of what you're trying to achieve with Beacon College? Well, um, part of it um, is the reality of the environment that we find our, ourselves uh, in, I would say nationally, but it's not just nationally, it's globally. Oksana and I have had the privilege of, of traveling to many countries um, since we've, we've been here. So it really is a, 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 a worldwide issue. And, and that is that um, students with learning and attention issues, and in this I include students uh, who are on the autistic spectrum, um, unfortunately, many of them get second. Lots of promises, but the system just doesn't have the resources and very honestly, many times not the level of training the personnel need. And so they get second. 
And when that happens, um, uh, parents and students show up without a lot of confidence in the educational system and the, in the educational system's ability to deliver on the promises that are made. And so part of what is very important at this institution is that we keep our promises. And one of the promises that we have is we want our students to have first. So coming to Beacon, it's not a learning disability college. It's a college where we specialize in and are totally devoted to students who have learning disabilities, ADHD, uh, autistic spectrum disorder. We are strictly devoted to instruction and the wraparound services necessary for them to have a successful collegiate career and then go on to what we call the abundant life. So um, I, I know this is a bit of a, a long answer, but part of it is the confidence building that you have to do in at least the first semester, many times the first year, many times it doesn't, a, a student doesn't get traction until 18 months into it. But um, it really is, um, it really is the most important foundation for Beacon College to do its work, to, to get parents and students feeling the confidence that uh, they can succeed in college and um, it makes all the difference. Very interesting because confidence is underrated. <laughs> you know, confidence can, can really make a big, big difference. I tell our interns here at Different Brains, where we start our internships at 18, when they're going for interviews like at medical school or law school, I say, look, you're, um, you're going to be smarter than the person interviewing you. And they're going to be insecure because most of us people are insecure by nature. So I want you to make them relax by smiling. Because if you look stern, you're going to make them nervous. And I put them in that whole headset that, look, you're smarter than the person who's interviewing you. Now, being smart, as I told the students at Beacon, is nothing to be proud of. That's a, a God-given thing. You know, but what you do with it through hard work, through your interests, through trying to help other people to make yourself a good living while you do what you love doing or want to try to learn doing, all of that is wrapped into the culture that I experienced up at up in Beacon College. Everyone is given that confidence that, hey, I can do this and I can do whatever I want to do. And the list of career paths as I met the different uh, graduating students was amazing. And I, and I think part of that uh, started four years before with the on-ramping of the students. And I'm doing all the talking. I'll let Oksana uh, address this. But certainly, we use universal design uh, mm -hmm. in learning in our classrooms. Uh, we teach multimodally. Uh, we also keep the classes small so that the attention can be uh, somewhat individualized to our students. So um, our classes do not exceed uh, 15, 15 students. Wow. But it's also the, um, and by the way, it's not a watered down curriculum. It is the curriculum. We're fully accredited and we have been since 2003, the same way that any institution with the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools is accredited, our regional accreditor. But it's also, uh, the, the model of wrapping around these students, not to do the work for them, but to keep them guided in moving forward, moving or constantly moving forward. And part of that comes from uh, the uh, Center for Student Success, which Oksana um, is now the director of. You wanna talk a little bit about the four-year model that um, yes, as a as an educational psychologist, and I will I worked all my life at a high education, never worked in anywhere else. And to me, higher education is very much about partnership between a student and a professor. And that's why I've always been uncomfortable about the fact that pull out services, which are absolutely necessary for elementary or middle school students, are being used at a college level, because I believe if there is anything we should do for the students, it's not to pull them out of the classroom and explain the same thing, but twice. 
but rather bring them back into the classroom so that they could interact as a colleague, as a partner with the professor. And during that interaction, during that participation and engagement, create the new knowledge, which is the purpose of college education. It's not so much about remembering and understanding like it is in secondary schools. It's more about evaluating, analyzing, creating, applying. So it's a very different, for, these are very different forms of thinking. And for that, you need a partner. And it shouldn't be a tutor somewhere outside of the classroom in the resource room. Students need to be brought, brought back into the classrooms. And I think this is the big difference. And this is the major big difference because the magic is happening in the classroom, not outside of it. My center is very important, but my purpose and all learning specialists, their purpose is really to help the students be productive participants of the learning process that is happening in the classroom, which is happening also during the job interviews, internships, everything that other students may enjoy. enjoy. So we want our students also be able to do it. And there are ways, and our faculty are doing a lot, evidence-based, best practices, education, learning specialists are doing a lot, teaching students how to attend class, how to participate in class, how to do the work. But together, we're creating a perfect college environment in which students feel that they are college students and um, productive and successful. And they feel it. You can tell that they feel it, which is a natural segue to how Beacon College has dealt with and met the challenges of these COVID times. You want to talk a little bit about that? From February of uh, 2020 to, I would say, August of 2020, um, it was a, a frightening time. Uh, in particular for Beacon, for our board of trustees, for our faculty, for everybody who was associated with the institution. Because we realized fairly early on when everybody went to virtual learning platforms that we, we had a virtual learning platform, it's Canvas, it, it's really very fine. But our student, in a high tech world, the difference with Beacon is that we are also high touch. And many of our students do, do not, and we have research to back this up, many of our students do not do as well in virtual learning environments as they do on campus in the classroom where they're part of a larger community where they have immediate, just about immediate access to uh, the, the faculty and, and the staff and the residential life staff who can really um, put them at ease and, and keep them moving forward. And so we decided in April, after taking a look at, um, at where we thought uh, our success lied, we decided that we were going to bring our students back. And um, of course, there was still a lot of uh, to and fro in the policy environment as to whether that was a good idea, whether you should do it or not. But we understood that our students um, were, were not going to be best served by having them virtual learners. We did set up the opportunity for students to return to campus. We had something we called the beacon bubble which uh, the students um, became accustomed to, but didn't like, which was basically we closed off the campus environment. We allowed them to um, be anywhere on campus. We opened it up slowly later on, um, but that uh, beacon bubble, with that beacon bubble, we only had one student case that whole year, which was wow. pretty remarkable. And at that time we had about 435 students. Now we have 470, but um, uh, so that worked for us, but we were, we were testing new ground because most schools were going totally virtually. We also allowed uh, for students who did not want to come to campus, if they and their families made the decision they did not want to come back to campus. We also allowed them to participate uh, in the class as it was being delivered uh, through a virtual platform. Mm -hmm. And so um, what we found was that, and we, 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 
did some research. Our students performed who were in the virtual environment performed about 10% less effectively than we would have expected uh, were they in class. But the other thing that they missed, and we did try very hard to keep the students and families in, involved in activities that were virtual activities so they could be proud of it. But what they really um, missed was the ability to work on their executive functioning skills, to work on social emotional development, of being part of a community, a residential mm -hmm. community. 92% of our students in a given year uh, are, are residents on campus. And we really like that element because uh, it's not only the classroom experience, as, as critical as the classroom experience is to all of this, it really is the ability to become members of a healthy community and to add to that healthy community. And to learn independent life skills and be part of a team. Um, yeah, the, um, the statistics have not been good for virtual learning. And as with most things, when you add a different brain to the mix, then it's like putting it on steroids, whatever that problem may be. And consistently, I find anyway, the most underrated aspect of everything when it comes to cognitive development and overall development of the person is socialization and there's no substitute for it mm -hmm. uh, those of us who unfortunately are isolated and alone our brains develop differently and we're it's not good and you provide the whole structure there it's a community there's independent life skills there's friendships there's coaches there's everything you could need and whatever you need because you know it, it does no good to write on the blackboard if the student in the first row is blind you know what it doesn't make sense um and the other piece in in all of this is we're constantly pushing boundaries and um and all of this deals with what our identity is a uh, a competitive undergraduate college that serves a special profile of learners and a very diverse profile of learners, by the way. But in doing that, um, every good liberal arts college uh, has a semester abroad program. This institution didn't. And we had already looked at the data on the number of students with disabilities who had ever had a semester abroad program. And it's very low. It's well under 5% uh, for all disabilities. And it's about 0.8% uh, for those with learning and attention issues. So five years ago, uh, we decided that we were going to put a program in, in Tuscany and uh, to give our students first, not a bad beacon in Tuscany. And they uh, were in uh, Prato. Uh, Italy, which is right right outside of Florence. We have our own uh, small campus that uh, we run. Wow. Uh, and and so the it's a it's a full semester abroad program. We uh, take over a beautiful hotel in a medieval city and uh, they have a, a great meal plan at about 19 restaurants. And every one of those students comes back just as transformed as any undergraduate would be when they have an experience like that, which makes them learn a lot about themselves, but also really broadens their perspective on the world. And so in, in athletics, there wasn't much in athletics here. Many of our students, uh, certainly they like their esports, but many of our students, uh, Maybe because of their profile, they they really didn't get actively involved in in athletics. Um, we're not so much concerned about the W's and L's. We're concerned about are the students for, first of all staying fit, but second of all of all, can they participate competitively, both uh, with the intramurals and extramurals with uh, with club teams outside? Can they do things that they had never done? before. So uh, basketball, we're pretty competitive in. Um, uh, flag football, there is a, a university league uh, in the South that uh, we get, get involved with. And there are a number of other, 
we have a cross country team that get up at 6 a.m. every morning and uh, and and work on that. And there are a number of other sports that we are getting ready to to develop at this point and expand them beyond the intramural end. But for many of our students, they'll tell you this is the first time that I actually knew that I could really play soccer pretty well. You know, do soccer as well. So um, you. We want them to have, as I said, first, and we want them to have the first in a undergraduate liberal arts education. And part of that are all of these opportunities to explore themselves uh, and, and what they can do in ways they may never have done before. It's just uh, fabulous, fabulous. Mm -hmm. What do you see going forward with Beacon's future? That's um, that's a question that is going to be challenging uh, the board of trustees uh, here at the college, certainly over the course of the next two to three years, because the reality is um, the uh, institution in 2013 was well under 200 students. And we had a plan, a 10 year plan to get to uh, no more than 450 to uh, 500 uh, undergraduates. You're just on the 20th year of your 10 year plan, that's all. <laughs> we're, we are um, a little ahead of schedule. We're, we're, we'll be at 470 um, this, this, uh, this fall. And uh, we have designed this not to go over 500 students on campus. We've developed two other programs um, that are pre-college programs that are highly successful. Uh, one is called Navigator Prep, which um, allows for both parents and students the year before uh, uh, their, their first college year to uh, develop, not together, but to develop along tracks to prepare them for the rigors and for the, to, for the expectations of higher education and it's a nine month program. And that's grown from uh, the first year we did it was I think about 30, 35, I've made 50 people. And, and now we have uh, 220 families and their student in that program. They don't have to go to Beacon. Um, we've had many uh, students who have learning disabilities who are going on to major universities who still need uh, some of that preparation their parents do as well because the parents can be anxious. And then we have a program called Summer for Success and that started with 35 uh, about seven years ago and it's a th three week residential college experience for juniors and seniors in high school who aren't sure whether they want to go uh, on to college or if they would like to go on to college they just want to kind of have some initial traction as to what that's going to be like so that they're not surprised when they come. And that program uh, this year, we've had to um, stop it at, uh, we've closed it out at 130 students. It will be this July, uh, 130 students from all over the country and a couple of foreign countries. And uh, we have a waiting list right now that's above 35, I know for that program. Had we, if we had the facilities and uh, very honestly, the staff with the kind of specialized expertise that, that we need, um, you know, we're really maxing out both of those things, but they're great programs. So for the future, we have a couple more buildings to complete, uh, an academic uh, center and um, an indoor uh, recreation center within the next five years. Um, they'll be completed within the next five years. But programmatically, we're going to be looking at um, a review of, the, of at least two more potential majors. And we're really, at this point, beginning our market study, looking at uh, not only what the labor market is um, and what it is expected to be, but also what students and their families are looking for. And that will take place over the course of the next year and a year after that, we'll begin to take a look at uh, the addition of, of 
two new majors uh, for the institution. Yeah, you know, we all forget that, that the landscape for employment is changing. Mm -hmm. It's not a, not a stable thing like it was when I was growing up in the 50s, you know. You know, and, and very candidly for, now 15% of our students go on to graduate school. And it's pretty remarkable for students who were told they may never go to college. Mm -hmm. um, but the remainder we have, last year we had an 84% uh, career placement rate. That's a good rate but we're more concerned with the depth of the, the kinds of positions that they're getting. And I know the career market's in flux, but when parents um, put their faith in, in Beacon, they're also putting their faith in how we can help shape the, the student's future. Now we can't promise them a job, but we can do everything we can to prepare them for uh, worthy work and for good citizenship. And uh, so we have a four-year career development model built into our curriculum. Uh, we have an internship requirement uh, for every student, irrespective of uh, major. And, um, but this year we we did a full study of, of our career development area, not because we weren't doing well, but because we really refuse to be self-satisfied and we really want to do a really fine job because it, in the end, it's uh, a student's ability to, to live an independent and productive life on, and, and to make a contribution on their own that really makes a difference. I mean, I, I use the line, um, our graduates are Beacon's most enduring legacy. So we want that legacy to be a, a really rich one, not only collectively, but for each individual that uh, we admit at, at Beacon College. For our audience who want to learn more about Beacon College in Leesburg, Florida, um, where can they learn more about you? You can learn on our website, um, beaconcollege.edu um, and uh, we have a, a pretty robust uh, website where you can learn everything you would like to know about not only our program uh, but also our, our outcomes and um, some of our ambitions for the future. Well, George and Oksana, it's been a pleasure to have you both here again at Exploring Different Brains. And we hope you'll be back and become regulars. Keep up the great work you're both doing at Beacon College. Thank you so much. Thank you, Hacky. Thank you, Hacky. Exploring Different Brains is a production of Different Brains. Visit us at differentbrains.org. 